All right, guys, welcome back to the Fossil Prep Blog. Um, I'm Zach, as your host as always, and today's sample is an aminoid. This is um, part of the BLM's repository here at the University of Utah. And I'm going to start with this piece because A, it's already pretty good, and I can see quite a lot of uh, information about the fossil, and I need to learn how the fossil and the matrix around it differ, so this is going to be a good one to start learning about that. Also, some really good news, as many of you know, um, last time with the trilobite I was working on, a small piece of it broke off. I was able to find that today. I am really excited about that. That means I can finally put the whole thing back together again. I had to um, sweep up all of the remains that are inside the, the box here and put them through a sift to remove the powder and then start going through all the little pieces with the brush. But I did indeed find it, which I am super excited about. I'm also trying out a new thing today. I have a microphone on my chest, so I'm hoping that with that you will be able to hear me much, much better uh, instead of having the difficulty that we were having. Also, our curator here has done me a humongous favor and has worked very hard to rearrange the shop a little bit. so. The vacuum is now in a different room and the plumbing goes through the wall for the vacuum so you won't have to worry about hearing the vacuum. Um, so that's really good. So that's some noise cancellation in the background there for us, which is wonderful. All right, so we have here the, the air scribe. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I've got it on a pretty low PSI. I think we're at we're about four or five for the PSI. Uh, we're still I'm going to go and use the aluminum oxide. Let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? All right, already for the portion up here on these ribs, you can clearly see where the fossil is, and there's only a thin layer of stuff here. Nothing that any measurements couldn't be taken with, but I still want to expose this little piece of fossil here. Also, it has been quite some time for me since I've been here, and I've been really sad about that. I've been working on getting ready for grad school. I've been working on lots of other stuff, and my wife had a baby, and then there was finals, and it's just been really, really busy for me. So I'm really excited to be here today and to be working on this. Uh, that is, that's looking pretty good, actually. And it's nice that this fossil is large enough that it's not going to blow away on me, like all those little trilobites. And I'll probably still work on trilobites every once in a while or other things in my personal collection. I have a really nice brachiopod sitting upstairs in my locker that I want to work on, so maybe one of these days on like a Saturday or something like that, I could come on down here and I can get that all prepped out for you. You can take a look at that. I, it's, it's like perfect condition. I don't know what species it is, um, it's from the Chainman Shale Formation, and this this uh, fossil is from uh, the Preta Formation. All right, so let's go and take a look over here. All right, so over here you can definitely see the ribs much much more defined over here, and aminoids are coiled exterior shelled cephalopods, so they're. We suppose, that because they're all dead, that they're actually quite intelligent in that we think that they are very similar to what a nautilus is. And if you don't know what a nautilus is, go ahead and look that up online. They're pretty cool. Although I suspect in the near future that I could definitely put on a aminoid biology and anatomy video so that everyone knows what I'm talking about. And I'll probably go into the same amount of depth as I did for trilobites and stuff like that. So it's theorized that the shape of an aminoid and these ribs really did help it with moving in the water and that different shaped ones were better suited for different things. Some of the research that I have been doing that I haven't talked about on camera because it's just a bunch of reading and there's not really any fossil prep with it, is that a lot of aminoids uh, from the Triassic to the from the Permian to the Triassic didn't make it because of a particular shell morphology or shape. Um, and so that was really interesting to me to see that. And unfortunately, the air pen is broken. We need a little pin 
to go back into it. We're working on getting that pinned. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on time lapse here while I work on this, and we'll see how we do. One thing that I would like to point out about this particular sample is that this rock is actually much, much, much harder than the trilobites matrix that I was working on. And so I've actually had to take the PSI up quite a bit just to get through some of this rock. And I may have to also change grit. So I'm using a pretty fine grit. And if I change the pressure and increase the grit, that'll make it so that it's much more abrasive and that I'll eat through this much quicker. When I'm done today, I'll go see if that's a possibility, but until then, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep working with what I have, because I am on a very tight schedule right now, unfortunately. But I really did want to get in here and start working on fossils again. I have really missed this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put you back on time-lapse again. Alright guys, so I was able to get uh, the top layer of stuff off of the fossil and this matrix clump right here that sits in the umbilicus. It's so hard that my current grit and pressure are not even hardly making a dent in this. So I'm going to have to call it there for today, unfortunately, because this is a much, much harder matrix than what I have been dealing with. So this area right here is, is matrix, and it just sits inside the little coiled up portion of the aminoid shell. I will get back to you t hopefully really soon, and we will go ahead and get a, a new grit put into the machine, one that is a lot harder. Um, it will be more abrasive so we can actually get some work done on this particular piece and make it look nice and pretty so we can use it for taking measurements. Thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the very end. I really appreciate that. Also, if you could hit that like button and the subscribe button at the same time and then click that little bell in the bottom corner so you get notifications every time I put up a new video, that would be great. So, talk to you all next time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye!